Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on a customer request quilt. She raises sheep and she wanted a sheep quilt and she sent me a couple of pictures that she liked of something that uh, I'm not sure she already has or she found something on Pinterest and so I kind of did a little bit of my own spin on it. It's the same thing but because I didn't want to do any copyright things I kind of had to do my own thing. So I don't know what square the size were of, uh, of the sheep were but I made my 10 and a half by 10 and a half and it goes with a little square with fabric on either side so this square right here is a four and a half by four and a half on the side bits here is a four and a half by three and a half and then on the long bits here the long ones here are three and a half by ten and a half and that will get you a ten by ten block just like this with the square in the center okay so I have to do 32 of those and then 32 sheep Okay, so I've already made one sheep, so I'm getting, I'm starting my progress. There's only 32, 31 more to go. <laughs> so that's one of them. And then the blocks will go a sheep and then a block and then a sheep and a block and sheep and a block. It's more like a checkers sort of game with the sheep. They also have sheep dogs too. So I thought about making an applique of one of those and sticking it in the down in the bottom corner or putting it right in the middle because all the sheep will be around. So I don't know, I'm playing on some ideas and, and I'll shoot them back and forth with her and see how she feels about it. So I wanted to show you how I got here. Uh, to when we when you get a customer request or somebody who wants to um, Or start an idea about a quilt or has an idea about a quilt. How do you start? So first it was the sheep so I went online and I found a car free cartoon Like a comic book sort of coloring of, of a sheep that would suit this Pattern right here. So if you even go Google sheep, you'll see something very similar to this Maybe not exact but something similar and then I just literally put my eight and a half sheet of paper eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper up on my monitor when I got it to the size I knew it was going to fit in my ten and a half by ten and a half square not being too small but also not being too big still having it be able to see the square around the sheep okay and then I just traced out each piece I figured out where the body was obviously made where the, uh, I would extend for the body and then same with the face and then traced out each individual piece because you have to have each individual piece to put together so the legs are one the body, the, the, I don't know, I would call it the fluffy part of the hair or the, the top hat or top hair and then the ears and then of course the face itself and then of course the legs, you know, if I didn't say that before. So it's, it's a lot of bits, but really it, it turns out really cute when you put them all together. So free cartoon, you can go find rabbits and turtles and dinosaurs or whatever and give you the same idea, do the same thing of copying it out, tracing it out, putting it to size that you're going to need and, and going from there. Hey buddy, want well, to come say hi to everybody? Come on. Oh, there you go. Keeps coming over. And and go from there on your on your quest for uh, for a qu uh, for your quilts, okay? So you can make it as big or as small as you like. So uh, that's what I've done and of course I just did a little eyes and a mouth, but I'm I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do the eyes. I was hoping for buttons, but she may not want buttons, so I'll probably just use a little bit of felt or use a stitch on here, a little circle stitch to do the eyes and maybe um, embroidery floss uh, the mouths or something like that, okay? So I'm going to show you how to make the square here and then I'll show you how to make the, the, the sheep. Okay. So as I, for the, continue with the sheep, I go and I trace it out onto my stabilizer. So this is the back part of the stabilizer, or I guess if you want to call it the front or the back, it sticks to the fabric. So you get it as it adheres. All these bits and pieces here are all stuck with a stabilizing fabric or a stabilizing of this, right? And then you take your uh, scissors. One once you have this pressed to your fabric, okay, so you're gonna, we're gonna make a little black sheep, and then we press it down, make sure it's all adhered as to one, and then we cut it out. Unless you have a heat and bond, which is the, you know, peel and stick, and then you stick it down, and then you're just doing your applique stitches, and you're getting it all done in that manner. So whichever, whatever is for you, I still have lots of this left over um, from doing some t-shirt quilts, so I'm still gonna use it up. As much as I'd like to be easy peasy with the heat and bond, I'm, I'm you know, gotta use what I have on hand. So that's literally how you make your sheep. You um, decide from a few body 
parts of colors. I've got golden sheep here with the golden hair and then a black face and a white and a gray ear. You know, I've got a blue face, white body, black hair, green, gray ears. There's, you know, different combinations. I've only got, I think, 14 of the sheep's made, so I still have to make some more. And then we're just gonna put them all together, okay? Sorry, buddy, you gotta go. I get some worky time. <laughs> He's like, where's my co-pilot? <laughs> where's Lois? <laughs> so we're gonna work on this one here. Uh, we'll do the sheet first and then we'll do the blocks because it's nice and easy. Okay. I'll show you up to the uh, sew camera here how I'm just gonna kind of place my legs about to make sure I'm getting, you know, it's very comical. So don't, don't be, you know, too picky about it. Just have some fun and then kind of Put, make sure I'm kind of going to put my body, my sheep body on top of that, but I'm going to make sure to stitch down my legs first. So I did find a stitch on my machine. It was not a blanket stitch. It's more like a blanket stitch with an extra stitch going on to the main part of the fabric. Uh, I can show you here on this one. It just kind of goes back and forth. I really like it, and it's also going to really stabilize it uh, to hold up to washes. So that was really my, my keen point. This is going to be a, a queen size quilt. Uh, I think it was going to be 80 by 80 and then um, and then a little border. So it'll it'll be a really good size. Okay, so I'm making 64 squares and uh, 32 of them are sheep and 32 of them are the squares. Okay, So I'm just going to put a little holding pins in here right now. I'm going to have to switch my thread out to uh, black. I'm going to do that. Whoops. Okay. And let's put those here. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch from the top down and around because all the stitches I'm starting and stopping are all gonna be hidden underneath the body. So I'm gonna come down here on the side, come back around the, like the hoof of the foot and back up the side of it. And then same for all four of these. So, but, you know, you could leave it as the white thread if you like, if you really want it to be seen, you could probably put a gray thread in. Um, because it's a pink body, you can probably put pink thread in. I mean, it's, it's really up to you. I am gonna just use the black. For this one be fun to play with threads I've got you know blue sheep and we could use blue thread I used white on that one for the the blue legs and the blue face but I think it looks just really cute and adorable so there's nothing nothing wrong with it okay. and you do need a pair of sharp um, little scissors when you're going around uh, to cut out your whole applique like the stuff you've adhered onto the fabric to you know like the hate um, the head and the hair and the ears, all of it. Come on, really? Where's my Googles? <laughs> all right, ha having an eye moment. I had no issues earlier, but now I'm trying to thread it because I'm on camera now. All right, there we go. Cheaters, that took long enough. Okay, so now starting at the top, trying to equal the portion of your uh, foot because you know it's going to stitch on this side it's going to stitch on that side so try and line up the center of your foot right on this the edge of that fabric okay as you're stitching it down onto the background All right. <laughs> Just take your time. You want to make sure it's done right. Move that thread out of the way. Yeah, lots of beautiful colors in this one. It's got pinks and tans and greens and blues. It's going to make a very beautiful quilt for sure. Okay, so again, start at the stop, start at the top. There we go. And just work your way down. And lift up as you go to pivot. Because these are sharp angles here. You can make them rounded if you wanted, or you can even make different colored at the very end of the hoofs or something like that if you if you wanted to go that far. Just kind of make sure you're holding your fabric taunt underneath because it's still it's doing a lot of stitching the thread on there right and some of it may pull in just a little bit just gotta be careful i got stitched down on a little bit take the pin out and there we'll stop 
There, needle down, pivot. There we go. I thought that was a really nice looking stabilizing stitch to make sure everything was gonna stay down because uh, it was stitching also on the fabric as well as um, like the stable, the background fa fabric as well as the applique uh, piece going down. So I thought, oh, that's, that'll, be, that'll stand up to lots of washes. That'll, that'll do really well. Because I'm sure it's going to get cuddled and loved. Place the body on top and then we stitch the body all around. Okay. Let's trim up our little threads. We got pink going on top, so we kind of want to make sure we uh, stitch, um, clip off those little threads. We don't want them hanging out underneath. Okay. So we'll unpin our body here, get it placed up here, and we're going to put the head the opposite way or the other side this time. Okay, because we can mix it up. It's very universal, the, the body shape as well as the legs. You can do whatever you like. If you didn't like it on that side or you felt maybe the legs were too closer to the over, other side, you can put it right there. Okay? It doesn't matter. We're going to have them facing left and right and right and left. So. Okay, now that we have the body pretty much where we want it, okay. we'll put a little pin in. Not where it's going to get anywhere near our... Um, needle. Let's put that away instead. There we go. And then, of course, we have to change that. Lots of thread changing going on in this project, that's for sure. <laughs> It'll be half the time. Okay. And slowly as you're plugging away, you will get your project done. Okay, so I'm going to put the head over here. So I'm going to start and stop my stitches on this side of the sheep. So I'm going to go over here. And then because there's the curvatures of the body as well as the curvatures of the hairy head part or the fur head part, uh, just want to make sure you're going slow-ish around the corners and into the, you know, little crevices, the ups and the downs. Let's get this one out of the way. There we go. And then just take your time. You have to be a little slower because you got to shift things around. Like so you got to hold your fabric just taut so nothing's going to get tucked underneath. Okay, well that one. There we go. Just cut her away. You'll get her. And depending on how many layers you decide your applique wants to be, like for the dinosaur, you could have a one piece being the back leg and the or, or side arm and side leg, and then the one piece being the body, and then another piece being the head and the front arm and the and the like the or the other side of the arm and the other side of uh, or the other leg. So you know you could have it stand out in many different colors of greens and browns and gold and stuff like that. The dinosaurs come in all sorts of beautiful colors. You know, even like you know, turtles. Turtles would be, you know, legs first. You know, then the shell, then the head, or the head, then the shell, depending on how you want it to look. Just, just think about it and uh, the process you need to get there to make it look its best. Give that dimension. Okay. So now we got our body on. We'll put our little head where we want it. Okay. That looks. That looks good to me. Okay, and I'm just going to use the blue, uh, the white thread to stitch on down on the blue. Okay. Okay. 
And then I'll wait to put the ears on next, and then the little fluffy head part. That's the hair head, whatever. <laughs> that part. <laughs> okay, now we got that part on. I'm gonna make sure our ears come off to the side, okay? And then once we put the other part on, just wanna make sure they're all where they need to be. I think we're gonna tuck that ear just down a smidgy. There we go. We don't want it being too close to the edge. Okay. All right, so we'll pin this one and then stitch around on this one. See, this is where another, I, I think I'll, I'll leave the white on this time around so you can really see the ears. And then I'll change it to black to do the hair part, so. But you understand what I got going on. I hope so. It's super cute and super fun. Let's pivot. Pivot. Oh, oh. But I ran out of thread. I didn't. Okay. So you just keep stitching and stitching and stitching, and then you'll have a sheet all done and look so cute. And it'll be just like that one, adorable. Okay. So now I'll finish that up. Okay. So that, after we get all those done, aren't they cute? I can't believe he's going to make 32 of them. So now we're going to do this little block right here. Okay. So for this green here, I have a pink center. And then for the red stripe, I have a black center. So here's my four and a half by four and a half, my three and a half by four and a half, laying it right up. Change this to a normal stitch now. Oh, no, not zero, one, one. There we go. Sh nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. <laughs> I just want the straight stitch. There we go. Perfect. So you just sew down with a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. What I did is I did both sides of the middle square first then gave it a little press and then put the two long sides on. That seems to be the best way to put it together. All right. Just like that. So we'll do the other one, the red. You don't have to use stripe material. I use stripe because um, she uh, it was part of the picture that she sent and she did like it. So, um, but it's all a mix of solids and stripes and Very, some very na lovely natural colors. So, all right, there we go. And then once those two are sewn on, just take it over to the iron. And because it's black in the center, I'm gonna press to the center. So we don't see any shadow behind the red. And then we're just gonna line up the red strips and make ourselves a red square. And this one is more lighter to the pink, so I'm going to press to the outside. Okay. And that'll be the same. The green will go on either side. Okay. Should line up just perfectly. And make sure if you're whichever way you're sewing, make sure the seams stay both on both sides. Like if you're uh, if they're pressed out, then keep them both pressed out. Try not to flip and flop them. It doesn't. It'll just add some bulk that you don't really need. Okay. And we don't need any extra added bulk, <laughs> do we? No, we don't. <laughs> All right. Here we go. And then after these two are on, we give it a press, and that's our other square done. So. So the only plain squares are the ones that the sheep are sitting on, and then the other one is a square, like a square and a square. Okay, and then we just give that a press. See, okay, just do it like that. Easy peasy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little project. It's, I have, I've had fun working on it so far. I'm very excited to get it all together, put it on the long arm, get it all stitched up. Um, I'm not going to stitch through the sheep. I'm going to stitch around them. Uh, and that's, uh, I must have cut that one a little long. If it happens, we could trim it up. I was cutting a lot. Uh, and then I'll finish it up and then I'll just bind it. I'll probably just use a black, black for binding. 
because I'm not using black as any of the squares. It's uh, the big squares. I'm just as a solid square. I'm just using it as little pieces uh, inside the, the square squares and and sheet and parts of the sheet. All right, so we obviously got to trim that one, <laughs> but you get what I'm going on. All right, so that is my TL sheet quilt. <laughs> Making some progress on it. Thank you very much for watching, liking, and subscribing. We greatly appreciate it here at the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. Uh, check us out tomorrow where we're going to continue working and finishing up the Royal Red Cardinal quilt that will be given away to one of our lovely subscribers who hang out with us on December 21st. Uh, you, will, you will get to hang out with us then, okay? And, you, and then one of you gets to win. Take care. Enjoy the day. Big hugs from us. Thank you.